What up, watch peeps? What do you guys think of the pre-order sales model? I, for one, am not a fan. Although I should be glad the brand we're looking at today only asks for half down, while many ask for 100% down, for months before you actually receive your watch. To me, I feel like an established brand should have the capital to do a run. It doesn't bode well for the stability of your company if you don't. So today's watch is from Borealis. The model is called the Cascais, if I'm saying that correctly. I admittedly don't look at Borealis all that often, because while I've built an homage or two, I don't typically buy them. That said, I have owned their 50 Fathoms uh, homage in the past. I don't remember what they call the model. But today I'm excited to be looking at one of their original models. So this watch was actually lent into the channel. It is a review piece, so I have to send it on to another reviewer after this. That said, if you are enjoying the channel, subscribing is a huge help and always much appreciated. Let's do it. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. All right, wrist check. In honor of the new models coming out this week, I am wearing my Serica WM Brown Field Watch on the Bond Clip bracelet. I don't know if you look closely, you can see I did get a scratch in the mineral crystal. But fear not, the new models have sapphire, of course. But today we're looking at a Borealis, and they always come in these neat little holders. I like getting these, single watch carrier. Normally I think you would get your warranty card over here. I just have a baggie with the links, as this is a review piece. And in here, the holder for your watch. This is the Gilt Dial No Date model. And while I think this is a rather safe design, I did enjoy my time with this watch. I wore it often, and, and I enjoyed wearing it. It's a comfortable wear. And there are some things I like and don't like about this watch. Why don't we start with some of the dislikes and then we'll move into the specs. One of the first things I noticed right away, and I don't know if you can see it here, but the bezel insert sits above the crystal. It has that sharp edge. It's something I won't settle for in my mods and I'd be a little disappointed if I bought a watch that came that way. One of the other things is while this is a no date model, it does have the dreaded phantom date position. So that's a little disappointing. It just seems like it's super easy to get the 9 OS 5 or the 9039, whatever it is everybody's using these days to have true no dates. I, I don't know why they would have just tossed the 9015 in there. And speaking of sharp edges, like on the bezel insert, um, same thing with the end links. If you see, they sit a little below the lugs and the lugs aren't chamfered or anything to have a nice transition down to the end link. So you, again, you get another sharp edge there. But the bracelet itself is one of the things I did really like. It kind of reminds me of the bracelet you get with the NTH subs, has these smaller, shorter links. Um, fully articulating, so you, you, know, you can crumple it up into nothing. But very comfortable to wear. And the clasp is... The clasp is good as well. No, no frills, but nothing to complain about either. A slew of micro adjusts and a solid fold-over safety catch and milled-out clasp, good to go. The bezel action is really nice. The grip on the bezel is fantastic. I love it. And it's really precise. There's no wobble in it. Um, no ver Maybe a little vertical wobble, but not much. But lines up real good. The crown grip also is really nice. It actually matches the bezel grip almost perfectly. So, I mean, not only is that aesthetically pleasing, but it's also very easy to manipulate. And like I said, how I enjoyed wearing this, um, the overall dimensions of the watch, the thickness, the, the case size, the bracelet, it all adds up to um, a, a really wearable package that's comfortable on wrist. So I believe all these models, um, all, every colorway is sold out. I think it's in one of those pre-orders where you have to have half down, but it looked like every model is sold out. The total final price I think would be $390. Um, that's without shipping. I don't know if they charge shipping, which I think for a, a Miyota 90XX movement, 
with sapphire and a ceramic bloomed. I think that's a perfectly fair price. Now the dial layout you'll see is pretty basic affair, almost Submariner-ish, just with a double indice at 12 o'clock. The handset I, I like as well. Nothing too crazy, but very legible. Like I said, the crown's easy to manipulate and you, you could hear that almost audible pop when it comes on thread. Um, the wind is great. You know, typical Miyota, it's a little gritty, but that has nothing to do with Borealis. That's just the movement. Um, it does stop well in each position. There just might be one too many positions. Uh, and it was no problems getting it to re-thread either, I don't think. Didn't even really require having to backspin it at all. Just grabs right on. Can't remember if that's a sign crown. Yeah, it is a sign crown with like a laser etched B. Let's take a look at one of my favorite dimensions, the crown size. 7.2. So like I said, you give me a 7 millimeter crown with a nice coin edge like that. Can't doesn't get much better than that. So the case size, and you know, these are always kind of hard to get. 41 millimeter, just something I like. The lug to lug. 46 and a half ish. Very wearable. Um, I didn't I don't know what the thickness is, but I on wrist I've always felt like it was rather thin. So 12.1. I mean, yeah, that is rather thin. I think only the NTH sub gets down to 11 and a half with this same movement. So the lug width, these are 20 millimeter lugs. Sorry. And I believe it does have a two millimeter taper. Four is better, but two suffices. Just don't give me a no taper bracelet. It does have a sapphire crystal with a slight dome to it. The water resistance, you can see, is 30 Atmos, or 300 meters. Like I said, I love the bezel. It is a Loon ceramic insert. And get a good look at the dial there. The textured dial, sometimes I think those can be gimmicky, but it works on this watch. So if you look at the case profile, it is vertical brushed. I, I, I like horizontal better, but... It seems like decent enough application of vertical brushing. And the lugs have a nice turn down to them. Not too much belly on the case back. So I think it wears close to the wrist, makes it more comfortable and yeah, it looks better. They are drilled lugs. There's a nice chamfer on the outside edge. I wish the end link fit slightly better. I don't hate that the end link doesn't quite go to the end of the lug because what that does is, you know, these male end links, they add to the lug to lug. But when the end link sits in a little, it doesn't add much. So what we say the lug to lug was 46 and a half. 47, I guess, if I grab the full tips. But with that male end link, it adds some to it, but not a lot. 49 is still wearable. And it's already half turned down into the drape that's going to go over your wrist. So in this instance, I don't hate the male end links. I thought they wore really well. Let's take a look at the case back. Mermaid with your typical spec sheet. The polishing looks real good there. You can see Hey Hey in the mirror. Uh, but overall, I think the, um, the brushing and the polishing is all really good. On the lugs, it goes the same direction as the end link, which I think makes for a nicer look. We already talked about the bracelet. Basically an oyster bracelet, but with short lugs. And whenever you add short lugs to a clasp with a bunch of micro adjusts, you're gonna get a good fit. And I did, I didn't have a hard time at all. Speaking of that, let's take a look at it on wrist. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Like I said, it wears really well. I thought it sat nice and low. 
I thought the lugs transitioned into the bracelet well. And I mean, it's just, it's a comfortable bracelet. You're no complaints there. Let's toss it on the time grapher. So here you can see it's running plus, so I'd say on average about plus seven. With 263, a perfectly healthy amplitude and a relatively low 0.2 beat error. And again, I didn't adjust the lift angle or anything, so I don't find that usually makes much of a difference, but maybe. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy with the way this watch is running. And on the scale, you can see it comes in at a reasonable 151 grams. Here it is side by side, the new Zelos Swordfish. And man, this Zelos Swordfish is really making it hard to judge other watches. But size wise, I think these are this 41 millimeter and this is 40. Pretty similar. The Bore S has a larger dial. And again, you can see the effect that has and giving an overall larger appearance, even though it's only one millimeter. Here it is next to a 42 millimeter SKX. And I mean, if you really focus your eyes on the cases, you can see that you're getting a bit of a bulkier case out of the SKX. But again, that small dial really plays with your eyes on how large the watch appears. It is thinner. The Borealis, that is. Here it is side by side, the Christopher Ward C65 Vintage. This is another 41. So here you get a 41 to 41, both with large dials. And I think, you know, to me, they look like they wear about the same. The thinner bezel on the Chris Ward may give a, may make it look larger, but I, I'm not saying it. I think they look about the same and they wore about the same. Both relatively thin, comfortable to wear watches. All right, let's get to the last thing. Keep the loom. And this is another strong, strong, uh, goes in the plus column, let's say. The loom on this thing is fantastic. It is BGW9, very blue, but it's very crisp, very evenly applied. The loom's fantastic. All right, let's flip the camera back around and wrap this thing up. So there it is, the Borealis Cascais Gilt Dial Note 8. And I'm glad I got this model in because the first colorway I saw of the Cascais was the white dial and I thought, oof, I don't know about that. It reminds me of something. Anyway, what do you guys think of the watch? Let me know, share your thoughts in the comments. I liked wearing it, it's a nice watch, but to me, it's not an exciting watch. That said, it's a comfortable wear, and if this design really speaks to you, um, you will not be disappointed with it. So, all right, let me let you go. Sneaker check, just wearing my Yeezys again. All right, I'm out. It's not too much trouble. Like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.